Andy Stevenson for a severe MMA here at Dublin Combat Academy, standing alongside John Mitchell, who's going to be fighting for €100,000 this Friday in Dublin's Tree Arena against Jakob Kazuba. Welcome home. Well, good to see you again, Andy. It's been way too long. <laughs> it has. It's been a while. Um, does it feel different coming back? This is the first time you've fought in Ireland since your pro debut back in Cork in Neptune Stadium in 2019. I know you've been back to visit family and to train, but does it feel different coming back this time? Yeah, it, it honestly does, and it's unreal. It's I've got such good energy this week, like coming back to my coaches, like catching up with Colly, hitting the pads with him and stuff, uh, meeting my family that live here. It, it's unreal. I'm absolutely buzzing. Yeah, it feels like I've come a long way now since I left, so it's great to be back. Yeah, I mean, like it's it's been a long time. I remember that fight well against Eric Nolan in in Neptune Stadium. The atmosphere uh, was incredible. Since then, you've been abroad. You've been training and living abroad. How has that been? You know, it's been a period of growth, I imagine. Yeah, massively. You know, I left uh, I left Ireland when I was two and zero, and now I'm eight and one coming into the PFL final. So it's been great, but uh, definitely a lot of growth in that time. Yeah, you know, when it comes to this event, uh, you're originally scheduled to be the main event. Were you surprised when it got changed? Were you disappointed? Um, yeah, initially it was pretty cool that it was a main event and uh, now I'm not, but still regardless I'm fighting for a title and a hundred grand, so it's still good. I could be fighting at 2pm in the car park and I would be trying just as hard anyway, so it's all good. <laughs> I mean, it is like, it's a, it's a massive opportunity, like, I, I think PFL, one of the great things they do is, is this tournament format. Have you enjoyed your, your tenure so far with the promotion? Absolutely loved it because uh, two of the fights prior were out of the promotion, but this is my fifth fight in 12 months. You know, fighters fight and I love being active and also it lets me plan my uh, whole year. So if PFL want to put me on five more times next year, that's what I want to do as well. It's perfect for me. Yeah. And you know, when we're looking at these cards, we're, we're thinking, you're like, oh, what matchups could we get here? And one of the really exciting aspects of this tournament, the lightweight tournament, was the possibility of you versus Dylan Tuke in All-Ireland final. Were you... Uh, were you disappointed that you didn't get to face Dylan or would you prefer not to fight uh, another Irishman in the final? You know, honestly, I actually prefer, regardless of who it is, not to be fighting another Irishman in the final. I like when all the Irish lads are doing well. I think it, it can kind of take away if there's two of us fighting for each other. I want us all to be winning it. Isn't that it? So now, now we have a chance for all the Irish guys to have a clean slate here. 100%. What's been the training like in, in the lead position? You've been out in, in Thailand, training in Dubai as well and, and obviously uh, getting the final preparations done here with Kali. Yeah, like... A, 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 like massive fight call for a massive training camp didn't it so I was in Thailand uh, training in Bang Tao and uh, with John Boy and it was fantastic so I was with the Hickman brothers and those guys in Bang Tao and I was with John Boy in, in Tiger and it was uh, you can't go wrong there you've got like especially for something like PFL because you've uh, different opponents each time you've every single body you can imagine out in uh, Tiger and it's perfect for focus you're eating sleeping breathing training you know what I mean so and then uh, I finished my camp with my head coach Milano so how like like, where would you consider your, your home base? Or, like, do you have, like... So, this has come up a lot, right, with Ian Gary at the moment, where he has this kind of, like, nomadic, nomadic lifestyle. And some people are saying, oh, is this the right thing to do or not? But I look at yourself, and it's... not I don't know if it's the same, but, like, similar, where you're, you're going to different places, different countries, and getting different looks. Do you feel like that, that's working? A hundred percent, you know, like, I'm finding places to spar the best lads in the world and seeing my level, you know, like, I was fortunate enough to be sparring Brad Riddell in Thailand, I came back to Dubai, I'm, I'm working with McGregor, and I still have the same uh, coaching panel since the start, like, Aaron McGuire is still coming up to corner me, Collie's still coaching me now the week out from the fight, you know, so it's, uh, yeah, it, but definitely the more looks you can get, the better, 100%, it's developed to me massively. Does this feel like, I mean, it, it literally is, but does it feel like a homecoming for you, this one? Massively, massively. Like uh, it's been a long time since I've had a lot of people from Cork come to my fights, and this is the one they're all coming to again. I've heard you talk a few times about Cork, right? And representing Cork, and maybe a little bit of a chip on your shoulder. Why do you feel you have a chip on your shoulder about Cork? Uh, not so much about uh, Cork, but I had a chip on my own shoulder because uh, you know I kind of felt like I came up the hard way. You know what I mean? I, I wasn't handed anything. I worked for everything I got here, and uh, sometimes I think. You know, did you ever see Michael Jordan documentary yeah, on Netflix? Yeah, yeah. Every small thing I remember <laughs> and I brought it forward. And, uh, At that point, I took it personally. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean? So, uh, like, initially I wasn't mentioned at the start of anything. And now, look, I'm at the front of the poster. I was on for a few hours topping the bill as well. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, uh, and as well, there's not as many, like, world, like, world-class guys coming out of Cork yet. So I want to pave the way for all of them now. So, yeah. What does representing Cork mean to you? It means everything, like, I'm, I'm a product of the people that helped me and the people that helped me the most in my life are all from Cork, you know what I mean? And I obviously relate to everyone the most back there too. 
So it means everything. You did an interview with uh, Ian O'Neill recently and you were talking about being a little bit underrated, but also the, the words you used was you wanted to be undeniable. And I know you've been doing a bunch of work with Brendan Lochnane and he's someone, like, as soon as I heard you say that, I was thinking, you know, when you look at Brendan Lochnane, he has, I remember watching him fight against Pat Healy back in the day, very, very tough fight. You know, he had a bit of a setback there fighting against, uh, you know, obviously the, the, the moment in Dana White's contender series, he had to regroup. And then he goes on this run, he wins the PFL world title. Do you have those conversations with him? And uh, did he give you any maybe insider advice or, or, you know, a bit of motivation even or inspiration? Yeah, Brendan was a massive source of inspiration for me. Like, you know, people ask me all the time, like, who inspired you the most in this sport coming up? And it was never, like, massive stars, although Brendan is now. It was the guys, like... Aaron McGuire, Quake, Craig Coakley, Mineral Aziz when I went to Dubai, guys that didn't come from any big gym and they went out and did it all by themselves. They're the guys that really inspired me. So definitely to see Brendan come out now and become a star and win the PFL was, was exactly what I'm aspiring to do myself. Is it almost a good thing that you feel underrated? Like that where, where you feel, and a lot of people do feel, that you have a, you know, a, a great skill set that can go in and, and win you championships. Is it almost like a, like a hidden secret? Yeah, it, it, it's definitely a, a source of motivation for me anyway. And, you know, the, the people that are around me and the people that have inspired me, they know the story, you know what I mean? And there's plenty of Irish lads and other guys that have inspired me and they know my level. And I just, I love that I get to prove it to everyone now. Because uh, ultimately, like, my other two fights in PFL, like, I, I fought that guy, gave him twice, and it was actually a dominant fight both times. So, and I only showed a fraction of my skill set. So now I can go out and show a bit more. You would think as a wrestling champion of Ireland that you'd, you'd have the respect anyway, no? <laughs> so the story of that is so funny, right? So basically, um, Ireland's not known for wrestling, but in Dubai, there's loads of uh, wrestlers. Like, there's these Kyrgyzstani guys I train with, and they grow up wrestling. And, like, I give them, like, trouble on the mat. I wrestle them all the time, you know? Like, and, I, like, uh, and MMA Cork's good at wrestling, isn't it? So they used to always call me Irish wrestling champion, kind of taking the piss out of me. So then, when I was fighting in India... They were interviewing me and they were like, what's your biggest skill set? And one of the Kyrgyzstani guys jumps in, Adebek, and he said, uh, he's an Irish wrestling champion. And they just ran with it. And, you know, even um, the last opponent, Jason, when I saw his coach after, he was like, you know, I told him you're Irish wrestling champion. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> and he, uh, and even uh, the guy I'm fighting now, Jacob, he was like, yeah, he's an Irish wrestling champion, but, you know, I'm second in state. I was like, yeah. okay, if that's what they think, good, I am. <laughs> you should walk out in a single. Yeah, maybe, maybe, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> um, how, you, how do you reflect on your, your fights thus far in the promotion? It's, you came in as a, as a striker. Like, I remember, as I said, the, the, the Eric Nolan fight, that was a stand-up war, uh, a great striking battle. You've, you've obviously displayed your grappling in the last few. Um, do people not realise that you're, you're not just a grappler? Yeah, man, it's funny, like, uh, people have such, such short-term memory in MMA, like, I feel like when I'm, now that I'm back on Irish soil, I'm known as a striker again, you know what I mean? When I, in my other promotions, I was grappling a bit more, but, you know, Jason's, like, a, a, the best striker in the bracket, like, like factory on his credentials, the amount of people he's fought, so uh, it didn't really make sense to go to war striking with him, I just took him down and dominated the fight, and now I'm in this position, so uh, I'll remind them anyway on Friday, unless I want to wrestle Jacob, I think I could do either or. Does the tournament format and the fact that you have, you know, you know you're going to be active, does that play into your game plan at all? Uh, no, more what plays into my game plan is what the, the opponent in front of me. So say if I'm fighting some guy and he's a world-class jiu-jitsu guy, like I'm, I'm going to go back to my boxing. If I'm fighting some guy and he's a world-class striker, maybe like I just know, I pick the easiest path to victory. Mm. You know what I mean? And I think that's the best way to do it. And like, so the reason I ask that is, obviously, we're at the final stage now. You don't, you don't have to even think about, okay, I might have a fight, you know, two months down the road. Are you able to kind of unleash a little bit more, or does that even come into play? No, I'd unleash regardless. <laughs> you know <laughs> what I mean? Like, you can't be holding back in this sport, can you? Every, every fight, uh, even, even when I took that fight in July, it was hard to see the next one. And even when I fought that next one, I, I couldn't see past that. E even this one now, I can't see anything past the date. That's just kind of how my mind works for these things. So, like, there's nothing in my mind past uh, the eighth. J just, there's only the eighth, you know? Obviously, you've, you've, the beauty of, of PFL additionally is you know your opponent. You've seen him compete. What did you learn about him in, in the fight against Dylan too? I think Dylan did really well. I think, um, yeah, I, th I think he, he did lots of things. Uh, like, he, he beat him everywhere in the first round. Uh, maybe he, he just got a bit tired going into the second and the third. I think if Dylan ran that back, he could beat him. And I think uh, I learned a lot from it that I can use to beat him on the night now on Friday. 
What'd you learn? Uh, you'll see on Friday. <laughs> I don't know, fuck it. Like I'll, I'll, I'll box the head off and I can take him down too if I want to both. Yeah. Do you, because your last two have been grappling affairs in the PFL, is there almost like a, are you itching to show that you've got the striking it under your arsenal? Yeah, 100%. You know, I think it's so funny. Like, uh, I genuinely think my best skill set is striking, but Irish national wrestling champion, so what to do, you know? <laughs> uh, come here, elbows. Well, I remember speaking to you, uh, it was ahead of your pro debut, I think it was. Yeah. And all you talked about to me, basically, were like, elbows, I can't wait to throw elbows, can't wait to throw elbows. And now you're in a promotion where you can't. That must, uh, th there must be like something going on in your brain, like kind of malfunction, being like, what the hell is going on here? A hundred percent. It changes everything on the ground, you know, because even uh, you get an elbow, you can, you can only punch someone so hard on the ground. If you hit them with an elbow, like I've shown in fights, like when I fought RB Emiev and I broke his orbital with an elbow, you don't need much space and you can do a lot of damage. So yeah, it's, it's, it's crazy they're not there. And in one of the fights, my corner team saw me, my elbow twitching because he was holding my wrist and that's always when I elbow. And they were like, don't elbow, don't elbow. And I'd like say in between rounds, don't even say the word elbow because I'm going to throw one, you know. So, uh, but I just got used to it now, I feel. Yeah. Are, you, are you looking forward to fighting on Irish soil again? Because or, or, I know you've talked before about you don't really notice the crowd and stuff, but... Is there like a, a you know a place of pride, or does it matter to you like to fight back on Irish soil? Yeah, honestly, I genuinely don't notice the crowd. But now that I'm actually here and in the situation, it's unreal to be back. It's unreal to get the energy to see all the guys. Like I think it's uh, I've never lost in Ireland. Like in in like how many fights do I have now? This is my 24th or 25th in MMA. So Ireland's always been a place I've had extra source of motivation. So now that I'm actually here, I feel differently about that. Can you remember what it was like in the lead-up to your pro debut? Obviously, that's the last time you fought in Ireland. Can you remember what you were feeling in, in the lead-up to that one? Generally, kind of the same thing I'm feeling now. It's mad, although, like, I've gone to the different countries, I've had different fights. It's still the same thing, isn't it? Like, uh, if anything, Cork was nearly more, no, more nerve-wracking because I was a bit younger and it was in Cork. So, yeah. The money, uh, €100,000. Do you think about it at all? Does it come into your brain? Yeah, so... Those kind of external motivators are like the things that motivate me in the camp. Say if you're tired and it's your third session of the day and you're kind of dragging your heels and I'm like, look, there's 100k in the line, let's go. But as I get closer to the fight now, that's an afterthought really is if I focus on my performance now and focus on uh, doing what I know I can do, then I'll be, I'll notice the money after, won't I? So that's the main thing for now. I thought it was really cool to see, I think it was yourself, uh, Paddy McCurry and it might have been James Gallagher. Out in, uh, out in Thailand, and, or at least all around the same time, training together. Yeah. Three lads from three different gyms, SPG Ireland, FAI, and you're, you're obviously fighting abroad. Is it nice to kind of have those moments when, you, when you're obviously representing Ireland always, yeah. but you're removed, you're, you're living and fighting uh, and training abroad. Yeah. Is it nice to kind of have that, uh, to feel, does it make you feel a part of Irish MMA or, or, or does that even come into your, your mind? No, you're on the ball there, absolutely. Like, and there was, there was Paddy McCrory, James Gallagher, Max Lally, Adam Darvey, Nathan yeah. Kelly, Dara Kelly. And man, I was burnt the ears off all the lads because I was so happy to be seeing Irish lads again. Like, it's unreal. Like, even being back here now, I've trained with like John Byrne again and, uh, and Dara Kelly, and it's class. It, I really felt like I was back in the mix then. Mm. You know, and when you come up in the amateur scene, like, MMA has always been like my, a massive part of my social circle as well. So it was class connecting with all the lads. Do you, so did you feel a bit removed then the last number of years, considering that you're abroad from the Irish scene? Hundred percent. I was living in a Muslim country about ten thousand miles away, so definitely. But so it's definitely good to be back again. <laughs> like, what would you like to see? Obviously, Bellator had a huge impact on on Irish MMA. Um, PFL is has now purchased Bellator, but they seem to have a, a strong focus on the Irish scene as well. What would you like to see from PFL when it comes to coming to Ireland, dealing with Irish fighters, etc.? Like what they're doing now, you know, they're giving like homegrown fighters the chance to fight in the huge true arena, and uh, all of us seem to be getting a big media push here, so it's great. Just more of this, like Bellator, did a, I was never actually part of that, but Bellator did a great job promoting all the Irish fighters, getting a lot of hype. Those true arena events were supposed to be really good, so just more of the same. What does this fight mean to you on Friday night? Uh, it means it means the world to me. Like wh when I was fighting amateur for a belt, that meant the world to me too. With like you know. Uh, Fighting is like my path, you know what I mean? It's, it's the thing I want to do, I can't stop thinking about. So my performance on Friday, on Friday means everything to me. What type of fight are you expecting against Kazuba? Uh, he's a good opponent. It's going to be a typical me where I go the hard way about it. It's going to be a tough, hard fight and I'm ready for it. And so do you have a prediction? 
a, a tough hard fight <laughs> but you know it, it, there's too much on variables like variables like yeah. there's fights I thought I've gone through lads and it's going to be a war there's fights that I thought that were going to be hard and I knocked them out in the first round so you know we'll just uh, we'll just I'll be open to it all Who's in the corner for you? Uh, Carl Keller Milano Nahar and Aaron Maguire Great stuff uh, The last one for me so let's say you go out here Friday night you get the job done what comes next for John Mitchell? Um We'll have to see, you know, like, obviously having that belt with me now brings a lot of uh, chips to the table, doesn't it, for me? So we'll have to see what the story is. Of course, they with PFL, they've just signed Bellator, seems like a great move for me, and, and see what the plan is from there, see what's offered. What, what would you, like, as far as development, though, like, what would you like? So, like, we look at this all the time with, with fighters, because th this is the European series. Obviously, they have tournaments in the States for, for a million now. Uh, uh, I'm trying to remember now, they didn't have one for, for lightweight, but... Is that something that you'd be looking to... Like, if, if you had the opportunity to go and fight the best in the world right now, would you take that? Or would you like to stay in the European for a while, build a little bit more, and then move on? You know, of course, being a fighter, I think I'm ready for the best guys right now. But uh, uh, thankfully, that, like, I have guys looking after me and I have my whole career that are more, uh, like, better better, better able to make those decisions for me now. Like, if they say fight the best in the world, I'm down for that too, you know. Uh, Carl Keller is a fantastic manager and I'm sure he'll do what's right for me, so... I've actually one more question for you. Because this doesn't make sense to me because I'm not a fighter, right? You had the opportunity in the semi-final to say your, your opponent missed weight and you had the opportunity to just go straight into the final, not have to go in and fight someone. And you said, no, I'm going to take this guy. I'm going to fight the guy who I've already beaten, take him on again. Uh, and for, for a reason I don't understand, <laughs> but maybe you can explain to me why you did that. You know, that's so funny you said that because... Uh, I. So basically, like I said, what really actually motivates me in the sport is my performance. I, I, it's my craft. I do it every day. So I came all the way to Paris. I did a massive camp. I was like, no, I want to put the bad performance I put on prior to that guy to bed. Let's, I came to Paris to fight. Let's fight. Okay. But, you know, just before I walked out, I was like, I am some idiot. Like, could I not have gone to the final? But uh, I'm happy I did it now, you know. The actual last question. When fans, they show up to Three Arena Friday night, they have a great night, they witness what they witness and they go home. What are they saying about John Mitchell the next day? Yeah, one of their own that worked hard, did it the hard way and gave it their absolute all in the nice. And, you know, represented myself with class and integrity like, like I have for every one of these fights. Like, I'm not one of these guys couldn't pretend to be what I'm not talking trash and all this stuff, you know. I just stuck to what I do. I worked hard and now the results are showing. John, I really appreciate the time. You can tune in to PFL Dublin Friday the 8th of December, live on The Zone. You can buy tickets on ticketmaster.ie. John Mitchell fighting in the lightweight championship final against Jakub Kazuba and hopefully winning €100,000. Appreciate the time, John. Thanks very much. Gents, Cheers. All the best.